Mm-hmm. I hope that the connection is not gonna. Mm-hmm. I'll open the Wi-Fi. I will open the door that the um, Wi-Fi can come in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is it better now? Okay. Yeah, I think it's okay. Let's try. Yeah, let's just do it. Yeah. So, um, the three of us met in Thessaloniki. We were um, traveling there and uh, we found out about the soul food kitchen. So we volunteered and that's where we met. Um, we actually went there thinking that we would record like a movie. But when we went there, we just started volunteering and that we just got very involved with that. And um, Mm. on the other hand, it didn't really feel right to just go and record the people there because we didn't really know them. But then at the same time, you were there, you were taking videos of people every day and photos and writing things and you were posting on Facebook. Um, And as soon as we left, I I just kept looking on your Facebook, what's happening back in Thessaloniki. It just seemed like a good idea to put them together into a little movie of your time there. So you can remember and so other people can see how it was. What (laughs) motivated you to, to post so much? What were you thinking? Um... Okay. Yeah, I I installed. Uh, I didn't have Facebook because in Iran it's blocked and you can't use it. And I was not also interested in using it. Like at the beginning, I was just lost in Thessaloniki somehow at the like for I think two three days <laughs> and confused. Like I was in a place which language was different. Uh, Everything was different. People were different. And I was there without any documents, without any passport. Or I scared a lot also. Mm. But uh, after a few days, I just saw translation and the people who were living um, around translation. Like in this time, there were just a doctor from Italy and the guy from Greece who were coming there um, every day, every afternoon to check the people. And uh, just the guy who his name was Christoph, he was from Christos. Yeah, he was from Thessaloniki also. And he was bringing like food like two times mm. per week, maybe for and sharing for, with the people like there were around four or five hundred people s- sleeping on the street. And when, so I just found a way and I tried uh, to cross the border after 20 days. And when I came back, it still was the same. And like when, I mean, when I was sent back, it still was the same. And like even the world, more people were coming because it was getting warmer and warmer. And um, uh, it was super busy and not that many volunteers. Even the doctor left, this doctor who was working there when I was back, they were not there anymore. And as I already tried and I couldn't do it, so I said, fuck it, I don't think about my goal. And I, I don't know, I will just leave it in the moment in right now that I'm in Thessaloniki. And now Mm. I need to do something for, I I need to do something anyway for um, Mm. where I am, for like the situation that I am. And I thought maybe with sharing, um, posts on Facebook, I can, it can help and some people can come to help who have more yeah. power than me. So then that's why I was sharing the Facebook post. Mm. Okay. So the events of the film happened two years ago. Um, do you know what the situation is like right now in Thessaloniki? Uh, um, right now... Right now, now not, but I'm, uh, I mean, I'm in Germany and I have my own life. I was more um, active with, uh, like, getting news from Thessaloniki until 
last Christmas that like last mm-hmm. uh, until last February that I went to Greece again. I mean, I was always talking with friends and checking the their, um, the news about Thessaloniki, Moria, and other places. So when you uh, when you went back to Greece, was it to Thessaloniki or did you just go to the island? Yeah, I went to first to Thessaloniki uh, because I still knew a lot of like not a lot, but there were still people who like after almost three uh, after almost two and a half a year they were still in Thessaloniki so I wanted to meet them and see how they are and I was two weeks there but there were still nothing uh, almost nothing changed like there were a lot of people um, from Afghanistan Pakistan Morocco Algeria uh, Syria Iraq and Mm. There were Africans also, but they were not. Uh, there were not too many. I mean, Moroccan and Algerian are African, mm-hmm. but there were also other from other countries like Ethiopia and others. But there were not too many from on the street. But from these countries that I said, Afghanistan and Pakistan, especially, there were a lot on this train station area and sleeping in abandoned building in other parks. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's <laughs> not almost. No chance. I mean, maybe chance. Some people get the chance to go further, and but as the problems are not going to stop in their country, and they are going to come. Maybe like there is always. Yeah. It's since I think thirty, forty years ago in Afghanistan there was always war. So how can mm. when that problem is not stopping, people are just leaving because they are losing their everything and they have nothing more to mm. lose. Mm. Yeah, so it was still busy. Do you have um, do you have any fond memory that you remember from your time in Thessaloniki? Uh, can you a positive a positive memory? A positive memory. Now that I'm thinking about that time, I feel that I was a happy person, although I was in a bad situation. Like every second. Now that I, if when I think about the memories of Thessaloniki time, except of the first forty days that I was in a really, I mean, I could die in Macedonia forest alone when I was living there for when I was there for almost 14, 19 days. So, except of that part, uh, I think every second uh, was a happy memory. But one that can be on top was the time that I could um, do I could do my my first my first um, project that I decided to do so the story is when I when I was back like at the like when I was when I was sent back from Macedonia and I was in Thessaloniki again some volunteers came and some doctors also came from Germany and Austria and the doctor from Germany he was um, giving me I was I mean translating for them as well and he was giving me every day some grapes grapes and chocolate Mm -hmm. and grapes for the adults and chocolate for the kids and I was distributing the uh, chocolates and grapes with the people and Mm. after like he left after a few weeks he left and so and we didn't have we didn't share share it anymore and after two months I think around two months some people came from Athens these people were the people who were getting this uh, chocolate also in the time of this doctor the doctor left these people went to Macedonia and they were sent back to Athens again, like police cut them and send them to Athens. And after two months, they wanted to try again. So they came back to Thessaloniki again. And they have some kids. The kids came to me and said, um, Uncle Ali, Uncle Ali, shall we? Uh, I just said, yeah. They said, uh, hey, um, give us some chocolate. What? Mm-hmm. Chocolate? I don't have chocolate. <laughs> what do you mean? He said, no, you were giving us every day. <laughs> I, then I remember that these kids are the kids who I, were, I was giving them chocolate every day. So I, was, I felt really sad. 
And I said, <laughs> okay, I will give you. Um, wait, I had a little bit bunny. I bought them some chocolate. And I decided, okay, so they are going to stay there maybe, here for maybe a week or <laughs> two weeks, then try again, then get ready and try again. So how can I deal, how can I do it for every day? I don't have money to buy them everyday chocolate. So I just wrote a post. I wrote a, um, a letter and I put it on the table in some volunteer's flat. And uh, I made an um, origami bolt also, like with a paper and like <laughs> for a money box. <laughs> and everybody was reading this letter and putting one euro, two euros, 50 cents. I don't know, as much mm. as they could in this uh, box. And then I could um, buy them chocolate for like next days. And I just said, okay, now it's working. Cool. I took a, but I can't get money, <laughs> like every, every day money from these volunteers. Maybe they don't have also, I mean, they are helping. They are giving their time. They are not getting any money. So, so I just took a, po I took a picture of it and I um, wrote a post in Facebook. And after a few days, a guy who I never met, who I didn't know him, <laughs> he wrote me that, hey, I'm, uh, are you Mikhail Ali? I said, yeah, who are you? He said, uh, <laughs> I'm at train station. Can you come in the parking of train station? I said, why? I really scared at the beginning because I didn't know who is this person. And like, the, I was always, I knew as I was living there for a while, I knew who is head police, who is they were also looking for me because I, everybody knew me in that moment in that area and like all, all the volunteers and all the refugees, even the people who were coming from Athens. So uh, it was a bit weird, but I said, okay, I'm coming. I went there and they opened the, the door of a van, a black van. It was more scary. <laughs> and I just opened my eyes. I saw a, a big van full of chocolate. <laughs> and they, there were two um, old nice men from Germany. They saw my pose they put <laughs> they, they made their van full of chocolate and brought it to Thessaloniki and that was a really good uh, memory mm -hmm. from Thessaloniki and we just uh, I just called an, a friend who was working with ambulance and he came with his ambulance and we moved the chocolate from this van to that van and took them to <laughs> to um volunteers flat and they were bringing me every day to train station and I was giving to the ch kids even when I left the chocolates were still there <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was a really nice one um, what is the most important lesson that you learned in Thessaloniki what is the most important lesson uh, I learned a lot, I think. I, I really learned a lot. What, I mean, there are some cliche sentence, but <laughs> I learned, I, I felt it. I mean, I, I, what can't kill you make you really strong. Like, I felt like the first night that I was alone in Thessaloniki, I was crying in Macedonia forest. I was crying for three hours and like in between laughing a bit because it was really dark. I was... I was sleeping on it on the top of a tree because I scared like some animal and in Persian we call forest jungle and I thought mm. okay it's a jungle it's not a forest I didn't know that it's not that big and if I I don't know but it was still scary like you are in a, another place you are in a where you you don't know the language you are in forest you, you, there is nobody who you can talk to there is mm. and I didn't have anything with me, so I slept on the tree. I felt that I'm going to die. Like 100%, I was 100% sure that I'm going to die, and no way. But then I was laughing, and okay, I'm going to die. Why shouldn't I enjoy the rest of my life? I mean, until tomorrow, that whatever, let's see what will happen. I'm on the top of the tree. The sun is going to shine tomorrow. If I'm going to stay here, then after walking a lot, that I was really tired. I mean, it was super hard to go on top of that tree after walking, like, five days maybe on, on the mountains and yeah so I like after that trip when I went back to Thessaloniki I felt I think nothing I don't scare from anything mm -hmm. I don't have any fear now like even now I 
I'm doing a lot of activities which are unbelievable for other people because I understood. I I was in a really hard situation, so I can. I feel stronger. I feel really strong. Mm-hmm. And yeah, just the thing is, we should live um, in the moment that we are. That's what mm-hmm. I learned from this life. Not thinking just about future. Right? The future is gonna come, but your um, present right now is gonna be past in a few seconds. So why shouldn't I enjoy? It? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you keep in touch with anyone from Thessaloniki? Yeah, I still have friends who are working in Thessaloniki with refugees or in Moria also, in I mean the island, and also I know people who refugees who after they couldn't cross. Like I mean they tried twenty times but they couldn't cross, so they decided to just stay in Greece, although it's really hard for them. Um, in Greece, but, they are um, still homeless, or did they manage to get some help from the government? Um, they like last year that I was there, there were people who, like, they were getting not from the government but from some organization. They were getting like 150 euros um, per person, I think. No, sorry, sorry, nine, yeah, huh, 90 euros for kids and 150 euros for adults some organization were giving them but it was not uh, stable it's it's not like safe it's not uh, like the organizations were doing it for a few months and then this organization were leaving greece and they were tr- trying to give it to another organization and this like in the, the period in between one month two months that they couldn't find anybody they didn't have and i mean mm. not with the homeless but the people who are living in flats and they are registered and this but yeah still were homeless is Um, co- right now, I don't know, like current moment, but yeah, I think in that moment that, I, that in that time, until the time that I was in touch with the last people, yeah, there there still were people, and yeah. So, how was your life like in Iran? And can you tell us a bit why you decided to leave? And also, was it like the first time that you ever left Iran? It was, yeah, it, it was my first time that I, I left Iran, and <laughs> the reason I I can't just tell you what there are a lot, but I just tell it's you complicated. what. Yeah, yeah it, it is really complicated. I maybe I can't say everything, but the basic thing. I don't know. Yeah, fuck it. I don't. I don't. I don't care. So I'll just. Just tell whatever. You. Whatever you feel comfortable with. Um. You know there are reasons that you can get asylum bit when you are in other places, and there are reasons who are helping you a lot, mm-hmm. but but they are not enough strong to. Yeah. get asylum or this kind of stuff yeah. um, if I say that the reason was that I was not a tree I was a human and mm. if I was a tree I wouldn't move <laughs> so I was not a tree that's why I moved and when, I, yeah. when I'm not happy yeah, yeah. Uh, this reason is not going to be enough strong <laughs> to Mm. get asylum in other place I mean there are a lot of things which are forbidden in Iran and you can't really you can't really uh, there are people who like <laughs> I mean who are mm. who likes to live in that kind of life but there are things that were bothering me and I I mean they were killing me somehow yeah And now that you now that you live in Germany, do you feel I think that I, you can do everything you want to do or not everything because here also still there are a lot of unfair things and there are there are but I can do more than what I could do in Iran and mm. I more freedom and yeah I think 
after leaving Iran, it's almost impossible for me to live there again, to, to be able to live there again. Mm. It's really hard, I think. It's, uh, yeah, it's even harder than the past because now you felt a bit of freedom mm. and then you go back to jail. Like, you not go back, you go back to where you were and you didn't know anything about the rest of the world. Mm. So it's almost impossible. Maybe just for a visit, friends or something for a few days, two days, three days, but not more because... Mm-hmm. Yeah, sorry, there were there are reasons, but I uh, can't say. But the thing is that yeah. Yeah, what I told you, I mean, that could be yeah. that can be enough reason that a human yeah, of course, move. yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, what are you up to now in uh, Berlin? Uh, you mean what I'm doing, or yeah, what are oh. you doing, working? What do you do in free time? Huh. I'm climbing on the trees, playing football. <laughs> and so you have a nice rooftop? Yeah, I have a really, really nice rooftop right now. And yeah, I I mean, I'm just going to park sometime that I'm, I'm bored and I have nothing else to do and then nothing planned. I just go to a park and I start climb, climbing on the trees and then the kids are coming to me and as you know, how is my friendship with kids? <laughs> Even if it seems a bit weird at the beginning here in uh, middle middle of Europe, it's a bit weird. But we are getting we are becoming friends really fast. Like at the beginning, the parents are looking at me like, <laughs> <laughs> and then after like when they want to leave, they just come and say, "Hey, thank you." <laughs> My kid <laughs> like something or yeah, we become like yeah, just doing this kind of stuff. And uh, I'm going to study in October hope, hopefully I hope mm-hmm. I mean you should uh, from, cross your finger from... yeah I'm gonna start studying in a film school here in Berlin I'm doing I mean I'm filming and I was filming a lot but as I didn't have a laptop I couldn't um, edit them mm-hmm. but yeah hopefully soon I will be able to do it <laughs> and in October I will start and start uh, studying film before October I'm gonna learn something from you guys <laughs> <laughs> what kind of movies do you want to make uh, um, I have some ideas I mean I sometimes I dream something when I'm sleeping I dream something and when I wake up I have a notebook and a pen next to me when I wake up immediately I try to write it down that I don't forget it and mm. I made some story out of it like I already have I think three, four really nice stories that I can start uh, making a few nice, like one comedy, one against racism, and one like these two are short film. But I had an idea about long film too. Yeah, mm. but I already have something from some trips that I had, and mm. that I need to make something out of them. And what are your kind of dreams for the future? Mm-hmm. Dreams. My dream. They are not just dreams. They are. I mean, I think dreams are something that are can be um, reachable or not reachable. Mm. But what I'm, what I say, are gonna hundred percent happen. So <laughs> <laughs> I can say that my reachable goals are to make films which are going to change us, are going to make changes in the world. I mean, like the people who are watching them, they are going to, uh, they are going to change in a good way. They are going to start thinking about it, not just going, watching a movie in a cinema or anywhere and, okay, ha, ha, ha. Okay, I'm sad because of the situation, but I'm not going to do something. I'm, I don't have time. I have my life. I'm going to be sad for two hours and then finish. I'm going to do something that if they are going to, if they are, if the people who are watching them, they are going to feel happy. They feel happy forever. If they are going to feel that they should, um, they are going to feel sad. They try to uh, work on it to make a happy situation for everybody. 
maybe some a person comes goes there for work just for two weeks or just for fun or for whatever but these small helps are not as small as they are thinking or as they from their perspective they are seeing it it's something really big it's making changes it's it helped it, i mean it was keeping me even if a person who was just washing the the salads it mm-hmm. was keeping uh, 400 people it was keeping me alive with uh, not feeling hungry in the situation which i didn't have anything to eat or any money i i mean i i met people who uh, at the beginning that I was there, I met people who were there for three, four months there, and they lost all their money. Some of them from smuggler took it. They couldn't talk with their family. They couldn't get anything or whatever. They felt ashamed to say, tell them, and they were they were uh, going to a place which called kind of I think cinema. I don't know if it was a cinema or whatever, but they were going there, and like an old man was taking them, and these people were having sex with that old man and this person was giving them five euros, seven euros, ten euros and they were buying some pommes, some french fries and with tomato, with the uh, mayonnaise, with the um, ketchup and eating them. Like five people were eating ketchup with the job which didn't, I mean, they had to do it to get something to eat. So this small, this mm. small thing that you feel that they are they are small, they are not, they are really helping. Mm. Even for one day, one week or whatever. Mm. Okay, thank you, Ali. <laughs> I have one last question. Uh, yeah. Do you still wish you were a bird? I wish I was a bird because I could, then I could travel everywhere without any problems. I could fly and everywhere, anywhere that I wanted. Like, But now I'm a bird who can just Travel in Schengen, <laughs> not more. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a bird in a cage. So then I don't take your time and we will talk later, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Love both of you. We love, love you. you. Miss you. Come back anytime that you want to. Okay. You feel that you want to be in Berlin and just write me one, two days in advance. Okay. Okay. Cool. Take care of yourself you and too. your goodness. <laughs> Ciao. Bye Ciao. bye. <laughs> bye. Bye bye.